Honourable Keir Starmer. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Can I join the Prime Minister in his good wishes to all the staff, to the armed forces and our emergency services? And can I thank you, Mr Speaker, and the House authorities for doing all that you've done this year to keep Parliament safe and open in challenging circumstances? Mr Speaker, since this is probably the last PMQs of the year, I want to look at some of the decisions the Prime Minister has made in the last 12 months. Let me start at the beginning of the pandemic, when images from hospitals in Italy and Spain were being shown on our televisions and the infection rates were rising in the UK. Does the Prime Minister now accept that his slowness to respond led to more deaths, a longer lockdown and a deeper economic damage? Uh, Mr Speaker, no, because at every stage we followed the scientific guidance and continue to do so. And, in the, and, the, and he's right to draw attention to what's happening across the, uh, the whole of Europe. And indeed, there are spikes now taking place across the whole of the EU. And thanks to the tiering system that we have in place in uh, large parts of the country, thanks to the heroic efforts of the people of the northwest, of the northeast, Yorkshire, Humber, we're seeing those rates coming down. And yes, it's true that we have spikes now in, uh, in some parts of London and the South East, but we will make sure that with our adjustments to the tiering uh, that uh, we conduct over the next few weeks, that we will address those issues. That is the right way forward uh, for this country. That's how uh, we'll defeat the virus, with vaccines, uh, with community testing and with tough tiering. And I think what people would like to hear uh, in this season of goodwill uh, to all men is a little bit of support uh, from the right honourable gentleman uh, for what the government is trying to do uh, to beat coronavirus and perhaps uh, just a little less carping. Yeah. Yeah, Starmer. Well, Mr Speaker, if the Prime Minister won't listen to me, can I quote his own spending watchdog, the Office of Budget Responsibility? Because they said the UK locked down later and for longer than some of its European neighbours and experienced a deeper fall and slower economic recovery. Mr Speaker, this isn't bad luck. It's not inevitable. It's a result of the Prime Minister's choices. But if the Prime Minister disagrees with me, perhaps he can tell us why does he think that Britain, the sixth richest country in the world, with all our brilliant scientists and amazing NHS, ends the year with one of the highest numbers of COVID deaths in Europe, over 64,000, each one leaving a grieving family, and the deepest recession of any major economy. Why does he think that has happened? Uh, well, Mr Speaker, the highest will have noted his slight change of tune in his criticisms of the, of the UK uh, performance, but perhaps he could tell me uh, why it is that the UK, uh, why the UK is, the, is the first uh, to produce a, a viable treatment for uh, coronavirus in the form of dexamethasone, or the first country in the world uh, to roll out a clinically tested stage three uh, vaccine. Mr Speaker, this is a pandemic that has affected uh, the whole of Europe, and uh, this government has continued to take uh, the tough decisions necessary to beat it. And uh, I may say so, Mr Speaker, without uh, wishing to uh, cast aspersions on the point of view of the, uh, of the honourable gen right hon right hon right hon uh, gentleman, I would take his criticisms of uh, the UK government's decisions a little more seriously, frankly, if he had been able to, to decide last week uh, or even the week before whether he even supported uh, the approach we were taking or opposed it. He couldn't do either, Mr Speaker. He abstained. Mr Speaker, I said two weeks ago at this dispatch box that I was very concerned that Tier 2 would not be strong enough to hold the virus. The Prime Minister said, don't worry about that, just support us, throw away the problems. Two weeks later, what have we got? The virus rising in Tier 2 and Tier 3, and I'll come back to that. But if the Prime Minister thinks that the highest death numbers and the deepest recession is somehow delivering for the British people, he's a long way removed from the truth. The problem is the Prime Minister makes the same mistakes over and over again. And two weeks ago, he unveiled that latest COVID plan. He told the House, as he's done so many times before, that his plan would suppress the virus. But the latest figures show the opposite, and the Prime Minister said spikes here and there. Let me tell the House, in three out of four Tier 2 areas, infections are going up. In over half of the Tier 3 areas, Infections are going up. Exactly the concern I put to the Prime Minister two weeks ago when he said, just back us anyway. 
As a result, this morning, 10 million people moved into tougher restrictions, exactly what we said would happen, going up the tiers. Does the Prime Minister not recognise that his latest plan has once again failed to control the virus, protect the NHS and our economy? Uh, well, Mr Speaker, uh, once again he criticises the government's plans without uh, producing any kind of plan uh, of his own. And actually, if you look at what is happening, if you look at what is happening, he was, except he was the mastermind author of the, I seem to remember, of the, of the Labour firebreak uh, in, in Wales, uh, Mr Speaker. Uh, but if you look at what is happening across the country, it is thanks to the efforts of the, of the British people uh, that we are seeing significant reductions in uh, the virus in some of the areas where it was really surging. And that is because of the hard work of the people of this country. And uh, we will, of course, be continuing to reflect that as we go forward with the tiering approach. And we will continue uh, to roll out uh, the vaccine and roll out community testing, uh, Mr Speaker. And I may say, I think that his time would be better employed supporting uh, those wonderful initiatives, uh, supporting uh, community testing, encouraging people uh, to get a test, encouraging people uh, to get a vaccine, rather than continually attacking uh, what the NHS and what the government is trying to do. Starmer everybody to have the vaccine every time I've stood up and talked about it. But the Prime Minister is just avoiding the issue. In some places, Prime Minister, in the last seven days, infection rate has gone up 70%. Everybody knows this is a problem. The Prime Minister is yet again pretending it isn't. Another major mistake of the last 12 months, losing public trust. We all know what the tipping point was. The 520-mile round trip to Barnard Castle and the the humiliating way in which the Prime Minister and his Cabinet chose to defend it. But now we learn, now we learn that while the Prime Minister and the Chancellor are telling the armed forces, police officers, care workers and firefighters that they will get a pay freeze, Dominic Cummings has been handed at least a £40,000 pay rise. How on earth does the Prime Minister justify that? Uh, well, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, he totally trivialises the efforts of the British people uh, in, 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 in getting the virus down. He, he says, uh, and and, and he, he says that, uh, the, the, that none of the measures, none of the lockdown measures uh, have worked. It's absolutely untrue, Mr Speaker. From, uh, from November the 5th to December the 3rd, the people of this country came together once again uh, to get the virus under control, and they may have made a huge amount of progress. We will continue with that tiering system, and uh, we will get that virus down. And that is, the, that is the best way forward for this country. All he wants to do, Mr Speaker, is to lock the whole country down. That's, he's a one-club golfer. That's the only solution he has. And then, and then, Mr Speaker, all he does is attack the economic consequences of lockdowns. Mr Speaker, you could script that from October and November when he was saying a lockdown is the last thing the country needs disastrous. Two weeks later, he put it on the table and voted for it. Ridiculous. It's exactly the problem what we've got. Not learning from mistakes. And obviously we know about Dominic Cummings. It wasn't performance-related pay, Mr Speaker. But I think the, the British people will find it pretty hard to understand why it's one rule for our key workers and another for his advisers. And it's now likely that the next big mistake will be over the easing of restrictions over Christmas. And this isn't smarmy lawyers. Let me give you the British Medical Journal. The British, British Medical Journal yesterday said this. We believe the government is about to blunder into another major error that will cost many lives. The Prime Minister should listen to that advice, not just ignore it as usual. And if he really is going to press ahead with this, can he tell us what's the assessment and has it been done of the impact that it will have on infection rates and increased pressure on the NHS. What's the impact? Well, Mr Speaker, I wish he'd have the, the, the guts just to say what he really wants to do, which is to, to cancel the plans people have, have made and, and cancel, uh, cancel Christmas. That's really, that's what he, I think that's what he's driving at, Mr Speaker. Uh, he's, look, uh, he's looking a bit blank. Uh, I think that's what he's driving at. But I can tell him that as of today and just, uh, just, uh, just, uh, just this morning, there is actually, as, as I say, unanimous agreement across all the uh, UK government, across all the devolved administrations, uh, including members of all parties, Mr Speaker, including uh, his own, that we should proceed uh, in principle with the existing uh, regulations, uh, Mr Speaker, because we don't 
want to criminalise people's long-made plans, Mr Speaker. But we do think, we do think it's absolutely vital that people should, at this very, very tricky time, exercise a high degree of personal responsibility, especially when they come into contact uh, with elderly people and avoid uh, contact with elderly people uh, wherever possible. And that is how, that is how, by being sensible and cautious, not by imposing endless lockdowns or cancelling Christmas, as he would appear to want to do. That, well, that's the only implication I can draw from what he's said, Mr Speaker, unless he wants to announce some other idea. That is the way we will continue to work together to keep this virus under control, to defeat it and take the country forward. Here we go again, Mr Speaker, ignoring the medical advice. And we know, we know where that leads because we've seen what happened in the last nine months. And whatever the Prime Minister says, there's no escaping the brutal facts that Britain has one of the highest number of COVID deaths in Europe and the worst economic damage. Mr Speaker, as this is the last PMQs of the year, I, for one, often wonder where the Prime Minister gets his advice from. Well, now I know, because I've heard the official newsletter of the Wellingborough Conservative Party. Uh, it, 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 it's not on everyone's Christmas reading list, but it is a fascinating read, because it gives a lot of advice to wannabe politicians. It says this, say the first thing that comes into your head. It'll probably be nonsense. You may get a bad headline, but if you make enough dubious claims fast enough, you can get away with it. And it, it includes the December edition, the advice. Sometimes it's better to give the wrong answer at the right time rather than the right answer at the wrong time. So my final question to the Prime Minister, my final question to the Prime Minister is this. Is he the inspiration for the newsletter? Or is it the author? Well, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, I think what the people of this country would love to hear from the right honourable gentleman this season of, uh, of goodwill is, is any kind of point of view at all on some of the key, on some of the, some of the key issues. I mean, he, this, this week he couldn't make up his mind whether it was right for kids to be in, in school or not, and, and uh, havering uh, completely. He couldn't make up his mind last week. Uh, whether or not to support uh, what the government was doing to fight COVID and told his troops heroically to, to abstain. He couldn't make up his mind about Brexit, you'll seem to remember. We don't know whether he'll vote uh, for a deal or not. Uh, uh, Mr Speaker, uh, uh, he can't attack the government. He can't attack the government if he can't come up with a view of his own. If he, or, uh, Mr Speaker, in the words of the song, Oh, from all I want for Christmas is a view, Mr. Speaker, and, and, and I'd be wonderful if, he, if wonderful he could produce one. This government is getting on with delivering on the people's priorities. We are uh, 20,000 more police, uh, 50,000 more nurses, 48 new hospitals, and, and Mr. Speaker. But and although it has been very tough and very difficult. And everybody appreciates the suffering and hardship that the people of this country uh, have been going through. We are, by rolling out uh, the vaccine, by community testing and by tough tiering, uh, which I hope he supports, we are going to defeat coronavirus, Mr Speaker, and we're going to take this country forward into a great 2021.